Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Minnesota just legalized recreational marijuana, which starts in August, and medical cannabis has been legal here for several years. To talk about medical cannabis and how it can help treat various health conditions, we are very pleased to have with us Jacqueline Higgins, and she's a nurse practitioner and a um, cannabis consultant. So, really a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, thank you. Again, tell us a little bit about how you get what you do and how you do it and how did you get started in this? So I am, I've been a nurse practitioner since 1999 and I've had many roles and practiced in many areas of medicine and eventually I made my way to pain management where I focused in chronic pain and during that time is when I started being exposed to cannabis as medicine. So 2014 came around and medical cannabis became legal with chronic intractable pain being one of the qualifying conditions. In order to um, engage in the program, you need to be qualified that you do have a condition that meets the criteria. And so it was during that time that I got curious because I hadn't worked with cannabis before. I didn't know anything about it. I have to admit, I was very apprehensive. I wasn't, I didn't want to harm anybody. Um, and so I started really on a journey to study and to understand what this was because I had I had colleagues who were very supportive and they started qualifying patients. I started seeing how patients were doing and they were they were doing well and medications were being reduced or discontinued. I, I was certainly not for everybody, but there was there were definitely a significant group. I started seeing people go back to work. And once you start seeing things like that, you're you're just curious, like what is this and how does this work? I made my way to Pacific College where I ended up getting a certificate in um, medical cannabis and I am currently enrolled in a Master of Medical Cannabis Therapeutics program about halfway through with a goal of really being a support system for the medical community. I, the medical community could use that a little bit, um, especially around the area of medical cannabis. Yeah. And I think uh, some of our viewers may be wondering exactly what is medical cannabis, like confused about it as well. So sure. what exactly is that? So I would say that medical cannabis targets particular health conditions. And a lot of times what you hear is people talk about a qualifying condition. And that is a disease or something where a person may benefit from the implementation of cannabis it is medical professional directed, and so you are communicating with your medical professional about how things are going. Uh, people, there's there's kind of a whole process to get registered for um, a medical cannabis, you know, qualification, and then to uh, enroll within the program. Once somebody's enrolled within the program they meet with a pharmacist who is at the dispensary who then helps them identify uh, tools that would be most successful or are expected to be most successful and then they periodically check in with the professional who qualified them or you know sometimes people will talk to their to other professionals you know about mm -hmm. this is what's happening and is this okay and is this normal or how do I make this work better or I'm noticing this side effect or um, I, I'm just not sure I understand this is what I want to, to work with or I'm doing great and I don't feel like I need to do this anymore. And so you have these opportunities to maybe unwind different medications or I think there's just some unique differences to when you're working with a, a, a cannabis treatment as a medicine versus um, an adult use for And it comes in different forms in that? There's different forms. So you would base forms on the goals of treatment because you're thinking about the onset of action. So if somebody um, was living with chronic pain, you might really need something for breakthrough pain and that might be an inhalation format because it would onset within about five minutes. Interesting. Um, if you had but they also might need something that's more round the clock. And so in that setting, you might want to go to a pill form or a tincture form where you would expect that an oral route of delivery would have a slower onset of action and then the duration would be longer. I know I interviewed a Minnesota firefighter who um, had severe um, PTSD and he 
said that the only thing that could help relieve his anxiety and his depression was medical marijuana. What are some of the other conditions that benefit from the medical cannabis? So there are 19 qualifying conditions 19. in the state of Minnesota. In fact, two were added this year. Um, there are several strategies on how those are added. Usually there are petitions that would be uh, submitted to the state. And, you know, certainly the diagnoses that were included this year are irritable, irritable bowel syndrome and um, obsessive compulsive disorder. Interesting. But Alzheimer's is on there and sickle cell is on there and chronic pain is on there. There are many conditions and they're available on the website. So you can kind of scoot in there and peek and see if you have a condition that might be uh, appropriate for qualifying. And dealing with your, your patients and clients, what have you, um, have, what have you witnessed and experienced with them with the treatment? Um, you know, I've experienced several things. Some good, some could use a little of improvement. Um, I would say that there has been a little bit of a cumbersome um, getting into the program, but once in the program, I feel like patients are very well supported. There are some expenses that have been, that have been addressed, I think, with this latest law that will be uh, beneficial for patients. But in general, the things I have observed is that people were doing better. Um, they were reducing medications. Opiates are certainly a medication a lot of people are concerned about. Could they, could everybody get rid of opiates? No. Um, some people really just were struggling in that direction and, and the pain was significant and cannabis actually blends with opiates okay so it's not like that's um, going to cause them significant or severe harm. The, um, but the reduction in the opiate certainly was supportive. Some people are able to really? reduce the um, muscle relaxers and so we were seeing really some wonderful changes in medication profiles. The other thing that I was personally seeing is that it didn't seem like it was so difficult to get to the grocery store and I could sit through the dance recital <laughs> and I wasn't worried about the graduation and I was really excited to go to the wedding. Oh. And I took a family vacation. That's got to be rewarding. So those are really beautiful things. And people who went back to work after being on disability, I, it's just, there were things I saw that I couldn't unsee. And so that's why I've, I've really been curious about this as a medicine and as a treatment. And not to be confused with the recreational marijuana that has just been legalized here. This is, this is for medical purposes. Right, I'm, spe I'm speaking to the medical focus um, in this setting, yes, correct. And do we know how it actually works? So we have this really cool body system that we found out about in like the 1990s called the endocannabinoid system. And cannabis works on the endocannabinoid system. We have our own inherent um, endo, you know, endocannabinoids. One of them is um, AEA, known as anandamide, and there's a little kind of joke that goes about that because it means bliss in Sanskrit, and so it kind of gives you an idea of its actions. And then the other is 2-arachnidonylglycerol, or 2-AG, and that they, they just work kind of throughout the body. Typically, people would associate AEA with brain and 2-AG and with more like immune and body, but those are pretty gross generalizations. But they work, and it kind of gives people an idea. Well, you've got to feel satisfied that you're able to help people. Yes. In this yes. way. Final comment for our viewers. Um, I, medical cannabis. Yeah, on medical cannabis. You know, we've had 80 years of prohibition, and during that time, you kind of lose some information and skills. And I see the medical community as being, um, you know, really having some curiosity at this point. A little apprehension, but definitely some curiosity about how do I talk to people, how do I work this into my practice, how do I do this? So if we could all give each other grace, if a patient brings it up, give them grace. If a professional is not sure about it, give them grace. So let's just embrace that we're all kind of relearning after kind of 80 years of prohibition and it's kind of still a schedule one. So if we could do that, that would be wonderful. A pleasure to have you on the Thank show. You. Thank you, Jacqueline. Really appreciate it. Thank you.